everyone thanks for joining us in today's uh, podcast from Richmond Hill Soccer Club we have a wonderful guest with us this morning we're very fortunate and lucky to have Luca Gasparotto with us from York 9 Football Club our, our local Canadian professional league soccer club so Luca thank you very very much for joining us this morning how are you I'm good thank you uh, thank you for having me I'm looking forward to talking to you um, and yeah I'm really excited for this Good. Thanks. Thanks, Luca. Thanks for coming in. I know you're okay, so we really appreciate your time. Also with us this morning, we have a Richmond Hill Soccer Club staff, the usual technical staff. We have Cal Horton. Cal, how are you? Good morning, everybody. Hope all is well and everyone's safe at home. Good. And we, we have Sue Herring, we have Hilly, we have Aaron, we have Henrik. Uh, we've got some of our admin staff. Megan's with us. Uh, Rossi, our club goalkeeper coach, is, is with us. We have Trevor and we, we have uh, many, many other people joining us. So my apologies if I've missed you. But thank you to all the players and coaches who have joined us to listen in to, uh, to Luca's discussion. So Luca, just to get us started, what I thought I would do is, is ask you about your, uh, your experience with York 9. Uh, how's that going? You're one season in. Uh, you've played a season. And, and how, how did that go playing for York 9 last it was, uh, it was really good. I mean. Um... It was a brand new league, so there were obviously a lot of question marks going into it. Um, but it was something I was really excited uh, about being a part of. And it was something that when I first heard about it, first heard about the opportunity, um, I kind of jumped at it with both hands. You know, the, the chance to come back home, to play locally, to play in front of friends and family, uh, to be part of something new and something special in Canada, which is soccer, which is on the uprise. I mean, it was a great opportunity for myself. Um, and in regards to the first season, I mean, like I said, there were a lot of question marks going into it. You know, what's the standard going to be like? What's the travel going to be like? Um, I mean, it surpassed all my expectations. Uh, the, the the standard was incredible. The the setup, the professionalism that went on throughout the travel, you know, our setup, the, the hotels we stayed at. I mean, it was first class in all regards. So um, it was it was a great starting point and it was just, really really good to see that you know we could have that professionalism and that professional soccer league in Canada which is something we were missing out uh, on a long time so um, it was great to be a part of in the first season and hopefully once you know all this blows over and we get back to some normality then it can continue to grow and continue to get better every year. Yeah I agree with you look I had the, the opportunity to watch several games and uh, as you mentioned, I thought the standard was really, really good. Uh, the crowds were good. I was surprised at the, the amount of fans who were getting to games. Uh, the TV coverage, the whole, the whole yeah. package was really, really well done. And I think, it, to use your term, it exceeded everyone's expectations for a, a, a brand new league uh, in a country that's really struggled with professional leagues o over the years. So it was really, 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 really outstanding delivery year one. Um, you know, season two should have started a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yep. this didn't get, get in the way. So mm -hmm. let's take a step back, Luca, and let's go back to, to your childhood. Uh, you were born in North York, just down the street there, and you, you, you moved to Ajax as a, a young kid, yep. and you grew up in Ajax. So tell me your first introduction to the game of football. What was your first memory as a young child in football, um, Luca? I mean, I don't know what age I was, but I remember, you know, those little house league games on the, the pop-up nets and, you know, going and yeah. scoring five, six goals in a game. You know, that was kind of uh, the first kind of memory I had uh, with, with soccer, with football. Um, Apart from that, you know, it was just, I, I played in Ajax from when I was, I think, every single year, every single team. So um, he was there every step of the way, you know, pushing me to get better and, and being the coach of our team. Um, 
And yeah, I think I started under seven and played all the way to 16 with Ajax. Um, I think we had one of the best teams in, in Canada throughout that time. We won two national championships as well. So, um, and a lot of the guys are still, are still playing. So um, that was really great to be a part of. You know, I still have all these um, memories and friendships from, from my club days. And uh, it set me up for, you know, um, what came after with the you know provincial national and uh, obviously my professional career so and we can we can talk about that as well yeah we'll get we'll get into that in a, a little bit Luca j just to spend a little bit time uh, time speaking about uh, growing up as a, a youth player and in the Ajax and, and as you say you, you had the opportunity to travel and play in national championships what kind of lasting memories do you have from that Luca is there something that that you take with you today and you think back and you think, yeah, you know, that, that was a great memory. Something happened, an event. Is it, or you may have several great memories. Is there something particular that you, you recall? Uh, definitely the national championships. Um, I, was, I was part of it for the first season. We won it at 15 and 16. Um, but definitely under 15, I was a part of it. We won it in, on home soil in Toronto. Um, and that was definitely one of the better memories of playing club. We also won numerous tournaments and, uh, you know, Ontario Cups and uh, Robbie tournaments from, from back okay. then. But definitely the national championship um, at under 15 and, and again at under 16 will stick with me forever. I still have the winner's medals and, uh, and all that. So that was definitely one of the best club football. Yeah, I, rem I remember back then when you were playing, looking... As you say, Ajax was a great club with some great teams that were very, very successful. I'm sure your dad takes all the credit for that. Yeah, yeah, he tries to, but I mean, uh, he needs the he needed the players for it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need, you need you need good players, so. Of course, of course, and just just for people who are listening, uh, look, his dad is still coaching. He coaches Durham FC, a, a local academy. He's a national B licensed coach, a very, very qualified coach, and has spent decades uh, giving back to the game. So Luca comes from a real football family, and he's, he's almost inbred that this the football runs runs through their blood. So it's great, Luca. Um, I remember you as an under fourteen player, and you were part of the Ontario provincial program at that time. I was a provincial coach at the time. Didn't work directly with you. But even as a young player at U14, you were kind of picked out and there's a, there's a kid who's, who's going to go far. What's your, what's your memories and experience of that U14 and, and U15 provincial program, Luca? Uh, I have a lot of great memories from that as well. You know, we traveled a lot. We played, um, we played some good opposition. I remember, we were, I think, under Fort uh, Skitchy, we traveled to Spain, I believe it was, and uh, yeah, spent a few weeks. Yeah. yeah, spent a few weeks in Spain. So you know, we had all these these trips. We got to, I think, we went to California as well. So just at a young age, being able to travel and play football was a great experience for myself. You know, being 14 years old, um, and it was a chance to play better opposition and and to develop my game further. So um, definitely a lot of good memories from that. Um, I don't remember exactly how we did against the other provinces i assume we we stacked up pretty well and probably won um but uh yeah definitely a lot of good memories from 14 and 15 uh, provincial yeah ontario usually does well in those, those yeah competitions. I, I, I think we won from what i remember yeah probably probably yeah usually quebec give you some challenges bc alberta a little bit but uh yeah, Ontario usually usually comes out in the winning end of those those competitions. So look, you you, you played with many clubs, and then you obviously are not many clubs. You played with Ajax. You you played with SC, part of the provincial program before you took off to Europe. And we'll, we'll touch about that in a second. Any coaches there? I mean, your dad obviously was a huge impact. Anything there? That any of those coaches you've retained that, and you think that. Yeah, that was a really good lesson I learned from that coach and something I'm going to carry with you. Any special moments there? Yeah, well, like you said, my dad was there every step of the way. Um, he kind of pushed me harder than, than other guys would, you know, being the coach's son, um, as yeah. expected. Um, but as well at, at Provincial, uh, working with in sketch Jim Car uh, Caravan and uh, Patrick Tobo, you know, three excellent coaches. Um, they've been around for a long time. They really know their stuff. And as a young player... Um, 
you know, you're always looking for that advice, that help. And they had loads of experience. They passed on their knowledge um, on the field. They, the, the sessions they put on for us developed most of us into to better players. So that was all that we could ask for at that age. Um, and definitely one of the, the better coaches I've worked with. Excellent, excellent, Luca. Very much so. Tell us about the big move uh, at uh, what, 15, 16. Uh, you get the call. Uh, talk us through how that happened, the big move over to the UK. Uh, well, I'm going to back it up a little bit because um, yeah. it actually um, stemmed from the, uh, the Under-17 World Cup. So um, being a part of that, I was with the Under-17 team for a few years, preparing for qualifying, preparing for the World Cup. And, uh, yeah, we played uh, in Mexico. The, we played England, we played Uruguay, and we played Rwanda. And uh, I'm sure a few of you know the name Raheem Sterling. He, uh, yeah. he played for, for England against us that day, a few other players as well. And um, we actually 2-2 two -two in that tournament, and our goalie scored with three minutes left to tie it. So that was a pretty crazy experience to be a part of. Um, and from that tournament, being a part of, you know, those three games, playing at that level um, and getting that, the coverage that we did that, you know, two weeks we were down in Mexico. Uh, my agent at the time got me a few trials over in England following, um, over in England and Scotland following the tournament. So, you know, I flew over with my dad being 16 at the time, um, 15 actually, sorry. And I spent two weeks down in England at Watford's Academy. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that didn't work out. So moved on to Scotland after that. Spent, I think, a week and a half with the uh, under-18 squad. Um, played a few friendlies with them. And then after the week and a half was done, the, the head of the academy called me in, uh, called me and my father in, and, and said they, they were interested in me. So got all the paperwork done, flew back to Canada for two weeks, packed up all my stuff, and then flew back over. Um, and that 16, I mean, that was, that was a crazy moment for my moving across the world without my parents, um, a whole new country, a whole new lifestyle. Um, you know, being a full-time professional soccer player uh, at that age was pretty overwhelming. You know, I wasn't sure what to expect, um, not only with the soccer part, but with the, you know, the lifestyle. Uh, it was completely different. Um, I know they speak English, but it took me a while for actually to understand what they were saying. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, that's kind of how it all came apart. I came, it, it moved super quickly, you know, from being on trial and moving back home, packing all my stuff and then pretty much moving across the world. So it happened quick. Um, I had to get into, the, you know, the swing of things pretty quickly to get, you know, to adapt to the new life I was living. Um, and at the time, uh, I was living with a Canadian family, which actually helped. Well, half family. So first three years there, I lived with these Canadian people and, you know, they were incredible, um, you know, helping me settle in and uh, kind of preparing me for what it's going to be like, giving me a bit of knowledge on the uh, the Scottish country and Glasgow in, partic in particular. Um, and yeah, kind of went from there. Yeah. So was there, is there any unique differences? We talk about the f football side of things. There's obviously differences in the culture, uh, the language, yeah. uh, the environment. But from a, a football perspective, look, it was, what differences did you see, if any, between football in Canada uh, and, and football, you know, full-time professional football in Scotland. Was there anything that really jumped out at you? Um, from the start, I could tell the intensity was, uh, was much higher. The speed of play, obviously, um, they were just very intense. Even in training, you know, tackles were flying in. Um, they just hate to lose. Even in small-sided games, you know, you've got the guys screaming at each other. Even in a training game, you know, screaming at each other, pushing each other. Um, it was just kind of a whole new world to see. I mean, coming from club soccer in Canada where, you know, sometimes it's all, you know, just light, fun and games and, uh, you know, little game here and there, some fun drills. To go in there when it's, you know, 90, 95% intensity, even in training sessions, was a big kind of eye opener for me and something that I had to adapt to really quickly if I didn't want to get uh, 
overshadowed and kind of thrown around. So um, yeah. that was kind of something I picked up quite early um, from a technical standpoint. Um, I wouldn't say they're more technical than us uh, over here. Um, the one difference that stood out for me was the intensity and the speed of play. Yeah, it's something I've recognised as well, and we've heard that from many players who've, who've left uh, Canada and went to in a professional environment, typically in Europe, that uh, the speed of play and the work ethic they put in mm-hmm. practice, like everything is 100 plus percent, you know. There's, there's no easy days, per se. Uh, players compete every minute yeah. uh, and really, really push one another. Uh, and if you were to, you know, play a bad pass or not play it to someone's feet or, you know, you get told about it pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, that standards are really, really high. Uh, yeah, I know exactly. Hilly, played in, yeah, Hilly played in England for a while. We showed, and uh, Hilly, one of the technical staff, were fortunate to have Hilly and his experience playing in England. Um, and Hilly says the same thing. It's just so mm-hmm. demanding in one another. For the right reasons. Exactly. Like pushing, pushing, pushing. Exactly. Yeah. And for them, it's their job, right? I mean, uh, the, the, that's their full-time job. They're getting paid. And, you know, if you're not doing it well, another guy's going to come in and take your job. So, I mean, that's why the intensity and the compete level is always, you know, at the top. Because, um, I mean, if you're, if you're not there, if you're not with everybody else, they're going to find another guy that can be that can be at that level and that can take your spot and they'll pay them and stop paying you so that's kind of the way it works so that's why it's always at the top yeah i think that's great advice for any young players listening and and coaches as well that uh, our practice sessions yeah they should be challenging they should be demanding but we have to push the players and in the right way in the right Mm -hmm. way obviously Mm -hmm. uh prefer but but really to improve, we have to get them out of that comfort zone. You you got to push them into that zone where they're challenged appropriately, uh, with support from the coach, uh, so the players to t- continue to to grow and develop. And there's nothing wrong with it, a teammate helping another teammate by pushing them a little bit. And, yeah, and in the right way. In the right way. It's got to be in the right exactly. way. Exactly. We don't want it to get out of hand. Mm-hmm. We want it to be professional and, and, and appropriate. So, Luca, let's talk a little bit about your time playing with Canada. I remember that game against England and, and mm-hmm. Q hitting that Hail Mary shot and it ending up in the back of the net. And then yeah. Sean Fleming, the coach at the time, Sean going ballistic uh, yeah. at the side of the field. I uh, still tease Sean about that to this day. But it was a great result for, for the team. and It was a great result for Canadian soccer. It yeah. really put Canadian soccer in the map. But England, as you say, was stacked. stacked yeah, I with- think, yeah players I think Nathan Redmond was playing obviously Raheem Sterling the go- their goalie was Jordan Pickford so um, a couple of high name players who are now playing in the Prem and earning millions um, it was pretty cool at that time I think that was actually our first point at a under 17 World Cup so <laughs> it was special definitely. So look at you you've played in many of the the youth programs in, in Canada up to U23 you've been involved in a few of the men's national team team camps What's the, what's the plans for you in the future with a national program? Obviously, the world's coming to Canada, U.S. and Mexico 2026. A great opportunity for local Canadian players to play. You'll just be at your, your peak as a, a professional footballer, Luca. Do you, is that something you have ambitions to, is to represent Canada at that level? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's every player's ambitions is to you know represent the their country on the highest stage and uh it's exciting first of all to have a world cup coming to this side of the 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 world um and you know having a local local tournament the you know the biggest tournament in the world in our backyard so that's pretty exciting and uh, obviously i'd love to be a part of that uh, i know it's still a few years away and a lot can happen but definitely at the time at, at this time right now that's kind of one of my goals is so first of all, get back into the national team setup. I mean, it's been a few years now, involved, um, and uh, you know, you see what this league has done for for players, for Canadian players. I mean, it's given us a platform to play consistently at a professional high level. Um, past a, over the course of last season, that a few players have gotten the recognition and and have been brought into the the national team for a few games um, and it's great to see I mean that's kind of what we were hoping for with this league is to give Canadians a, a platform to show themselves a platform to continue to get better and uh, ultimately get back 
uh, or get into the national team. So that's definitely something I'm working towards. Um, I think I had a good season last year and I'm going to work to build on it this year. And, uh, you know, the rest is out of my hands. I can only control how I play, how I perform, uh, how I prepare. And then uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully over the season, um, not only myself, but more, a lot more players from the league get recognized and, and brought into the national team setup. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's refreshing. Look at it. Several of the players have been called into camps by, mm-hmm. by, by John Herman. So he's very, very aware of the league. Uh, yeah, definitely. Very, very I think he, uh, he's also keeping tabs on us. I mean, they send a lot yeah. of scouts to the games. Uh, he follows closely, which is encouraging for, for players like myself, you know, to know they're watching, to know they're keeping track. Uh, of who's playing well, who's doing what. And, uh, yeah, the reward's there. Uh, all these players know that the reward's there if you perform well, if you play well. So that's kind of uh, – that's very encouraging to have. Yeah, that's great. Look, you, you mentioned a bit about preparing yourself and doing the right things and hopefully begin recognise and playing for Canada. We've got lots of young players on the call with us today, young players from Richmond Hill soccer club and, and some of the coaches and, and mums and dads. If you were to give a, a young player or a coach some advice, uh, what, what kind of thing, what kind of advice might you give them, Luca? Oof, uh, um, I think one of the biggest things for me, looking back, if I could, you know, do it all over again, if I was a young player trying to make it in the game and uh, to get better, it's for me it's about what you do when no one's watching it's the you know can I get better technically on my own can I go kick a ball against the wall and work on my first touch can I ball in the air and try to control it you know pass a ball against the wall for an hour 30 minutes right foot left foot you know you get you get the training sessions and you know the the training's good but you're, you're doing the same thing as everyone else what can you do when no one's there by yourself to get better than these other players that you're training with that's one thing for me if I could go back I'd you know I'd spend two hours a day kicking a ball against the wall or you know dribbling in my backyard or working on my left foot just just stuff like that when no one else is watching yeah I think that's great advice look and it's certainly something during this pandemic that uh, fortunately or unfortunately the club uh, had been providing the kids with I hate the term homework, but uh, mm. let's call it that, for lack of a better term, where they're, they're out on their own doing technical stuff. They're yeah. forced to do it on their own because of social distancing, right? Mm. So they could do it with a family member, maybe a mom or dad, but really, really working on those technical skills uh, to really improve themselves. For any young players listening, that was great, great advice from Luca, and we encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to check out the, the homework programs that Richmond Hill have created for you. And as Luca says, you'll, you'll get the benefit of it in the, in the long run. So the great, great advice, Luca. So Luca, this, this pandemic has affected us all. Um, what are you doing? Uh, is the club in touch with you? Is the club providing programs? York Nine, is, is, is Jimmy providing you with programs to, to keep you going? Or what's happening there from your end, Luca, with the club? Yeah, well, first of all, we, uh, we have our... Ho- as you said, homework. I mean, we have challenges every day to, to first of all, stay fit. Um, Cause this kind of happened during our preseason where, you know, the goal was to get to a fitness level that we would be able to go into the season uh, at the, the top of our, our game. So we have these challenges. We use the night up so they can monitor what we're doing and, and how far we're running. And we have challenges every day that we have to meet. Um, so that's kind of, a daily thing we also have zoom calls like this um, in small groups or as a full team you know sometimes the gaffer will bring the defenders in on a zoom call and talk about some defensive tactics um, or he'll bring the full team in and we'll just a catch up and also maybe some tactical work so it's just a lot of waiting and a lot of uh, unknown what's going to happen with the season um but at the same time, we still have stuff to do to be ready for when that uh, when the season eventually does come. Because it's going to be once the season does come back, it's going to be a short turnaround to you know get to that game level. So we're doing everything we can right now to be uh, fully fit and also you know 
getting the tactical sessions here and there so we don't waste uh, a lot of time um you know going over some stuff and it's fresh in our mind yes that's that's good you're, you're kept busy in the club or keep keeping track on you that's good i've got a, a tip for you luca with yeah. the nike run up a little, a little tip you're a you're a professional player you know all the dodges that professional players get up to uh just a little tip for you, Luca. If you tie your phone to the dog <laughs> and let the dog run around, yeah. And so try it. And I think it'll work for you. And you can yeah. sit back and eat pizza and drink Coca Cola. Well, I'm not there yet. When I get to your age, maybe. Hey, 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 hey listen, <laughs> I listen. <laughs> I it, Luca. That's why I know it works. So <laughs> thanks, Luca. So that as much as. Uh, there's time off for everyone. There's no time off for professional players. They've got to yeah. keep working. They've got to keep fit. They've got to keep sharp because you could get the call any day, Luca. The league's starting in two weeks, three weeks. Yeah, exactly. You've got to be ready to go. So for any young players out there, you need to keep sharp and, and keep active and keep practicing because likewise at Richmond Hill, you could get the call, okay, we're ready to go two weeks from now. And um, you've got to get ready to go on the field and, and start playing. So, look, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up there. That's about half an hour. But just before we go, Carl, is there any questions from any of the, the players and coaches? Maybe a couple of questions that we can throw yeah, to Yeah, for sure. Go. Thanks, Bobby. Um, great to see. We've even got a couple of York Nine shirts on the call, Luca. So, we've got some uh, York Nine that. supporters out there. So, we're in the colours with pride. Um, so, first question, Luca. Um, you obviously played in the inaugural... CPL season, um, you was just nicknamed the CPL Iron Man. Yeah. Um, can you provide some explanation to our listeners on what it was to be named CPL Iron Man and um, how you picked up that nickname and how it felt? I didn't choose the nickname. Uh, I think the league gave it to me. <laughs> um, but ultimately, I, I played in every single game. I played every single minute of every single game. Season. Um, I think it was 28 league games and six Canadian championship games. So um, I was the only one in the league to play every minute of every game. So that's why they gave me the nickname, Iron Man. That's an amazing accomplishment and something to be very proud of. So I'm Thanks. presuming your fitness levels are, are very high at the present time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I try to keep as fit as possible, you know. Um, I, I know my body well and, you know, sometimes during the season I maybe had to take a, a day off or, you know, not do the full training session just so I was ready for the next game. But really I try to stay as fit as possible. Excellent. Um, so we do have some more questions coming in from the listeners. Um, so I'll start with Elena. Um, what was the hardest game you've ever played in, Luca? Uh... It must have been against Celtic, Luca. Right? Yeah, I, I played against Celtic actually in the Scottish Cup, and that was quite tough. Um, hardest game, yeah, I'd, I'd say the uh, even at the Under Seventeen World Cup when we played Uruguay, that was uh, we got we got beat three nil, and it was uh, I, I I don't remember seeing much of the ball that game, so that was yeah. quite a a tough game. But yeah, definitely, I played uh, I played against Celtic in the Scottish Cup. I've come on against Celtic as well in the a different year Scottish Cup, so um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sure. I'm sure. Just to go back to Carol's question about the Iron Man, I'm sure you got a nice bonus from Jimmy for uh, playing all those games and all those extra minutes. There was a nice extra check in your, no. In your pay, <laughs> no, I mean. Uh, I don't think it works that way, <laughs> no, but uh, I know I, uh, I I just you know I'm glad I was able to do it. That's what I wanted to do going into the season was to play as much as possible. You know that's how you get better is by playing. Um, nobody likes being on the bench or in the stand, so no. um, that was kind of what I did. And I thank the gaffer, I thank Jimmy for for believing in me and for for playing me every game. I mean. Uh, it's easy, you know, when you have two, three games a week to rotate the squad and, you know, get some fresh legs in there. But he had the faith in me, and uh, that's uh, that was pleasing, to, you know, to have that faith from the, from the head coach, from the guy. It was great. Excellent. So a question from Ryan. Um, what position do you play? And, were you, and if you were a striker, who was the toughest defender to get past? And if you're a defender, 
who is the hardest striker to stop? Uh, I play center back, so I am a defender. Um, the hardest striker to stop. Oof. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to have to go back to Bobby and Celtic. I mean, I played against Moussa Dembele. He's now with uh, Lyon. Um, Lyon. He, got a, he got a big move there. He plays for the French national team as well. So um, he was a big, fast striker. Um, that uh, that uh, was tough to play against. I mean, I played against a few other top-level strikers. Chuba Akpom, he was with Arsenal for a long time. Uh, Jordan Ibe and Raheem Sterling were both with Liverpool, so I played against those two. Um, but Moussa Dembele was probably uh, the toughest uh, opponent to play against. Um, I was on the bench for the uh, Canadian national team when they had a friendly against uh, Colombia. And this was after their 2016 World Cup. And I don't know if you guys remember, but James Rodriguez uh, had quite the tournament. Yeah, yeah. So we played them about a month after the World Cup. And uh, I was on the bench, but James Rodriguez was playing. Falcao was their striker. They had their whole World Cup team. So that was quite an experience for myself. I know if I would have played, uh, Falcao would have probably torn me apart. But uh, <laughs> luckily, I got to, you know, front row that game, which was nice. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for that insight, Luca. So yeah, as a professional player, Luca, um, do you have a favorite player that you watch and follow and try to build your career after? Um, I'm a Liverpool fan. Um, so I, I spent my you know childhood growing up watching Jamie Carragher. Um, and I, that's kind of what I based, uh, well, not based, but tried to learn as much as I could from him and from watching him play in Liverpool. Um, you know, he wasn't the fastest. I'm not the fastest, but the way he reads the game and, uh, you know, he's always a few plays ahead um, and he makes up for his speed with his mind and his and his brain. So uh, that's kind of what I base my game off of as well. I'm not the quickest, but I, I'm good at reading the play. I'm good at being a few steps ahead and knowing where the ball is going to go um, and reading the play really well. So growing up, I watched a lot of Jim, Jamie Carragher and uh, I learned a lot from him. Very good. Scouser legend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So some, um, one player um, has asked for some advice. Um, obviously, when we go training, um, sometimes we don't always want to go training and sometimes we're feeling a little bit tired. Um, can you give players any advice on how to get through that? I think it's all mental. I think, uh, yeah, your legs might be sore, but I mean, I can't remember a day um, in the past five, six years that I was feeling 100%. You know, you're always going to have a niggle, you have a tight muscle, just something that's bothering you. You know, maybe you're tired and sleep a lot, but I mean, you need to get right mentally. You need to go in with the right mental attitude, saying you're going to have a good session, you're going to get through it. Um, and, you know, if you go into the session and you, you're down, you're saying, oh, I don't want to be here. I mean, I can't get through this. Then it's going to show on the pitch, and that doesn't do any favors for yourself um, trying to, you know, progress in your in your football career. you got to go in with the right mental attitude. Um, you got to go in and, and, and be the best player every day, you know. Um, not, um, what am I trying? not, you know, getting that wrong frame of mind when you're approaching training and when you're approaching games. Excellent. So it's always about being positive and, and making sure we're giving our best effort and putting our best one forward every session. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think people can take life lessons from that as well, not just soccer lessons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, last question. Um, obviously, the CPL, coast to coast, lots of travel. Um, yeah. What was, what was the travel like for you as a York Nine player um, prior to those away games? How how did the team handle that? Travel for the most part was good. Um, I mean, we'd usually fly the day before a game, stay in the hotel that night, uh, play the game, stay in the hotel after the game, and then fly back the next day. So it was kind of a three-day um, experience. Um, but for the most part, it was pretty straightforward. You know, we were all – it was all sorted out before we got to the airport. We all had our tickets. Um, all we needed to do was check the, the main medical bags and the soccer bags and all that. Um, and for the most part, it was, it was, it was easy. I think uh, maybe one or two times 
bit hectic, you know. I think we played a game in Montreal on uh, a Wednesday. So we took a bus from Toronto to Montreal on the Tuesday, stayed in a hotel Tuesday night, played in Montreal Wednesday, stayed in the hotel Wednesday night, took a bus from Montreal to Toronto airport on the Thursday, flew from Toronto airport to Victoria um, on the Thursday, stayed in the hotel Thursday night, Friday night, played Saturday, and then flew back home on the Sunday. So that was the hectic wow. part of it. That, yeah, that's the hectic side of it. Um, and that didn't happen too often, you know, where we had those uh, games far apart midweek, both away games. Um, so for the most part, it was pretty straightforward, but you did get the occasional like, oh my gosh, uh, this is crazy. But once again, it's about preparing and, you know, sleeping properly, eating properly. And, and like I said, the mental aspect, you know, you can't say, oh, this sucks. This is, this is brutal. I can't get through this. No, you gotta, you gotta get on with it and, and deal with it. And that's what we did. That's excellent insight, Luca. Thank you very much um, for providing the, the listeners with the answers to those questions. So thank you for those questions, listeners. No problem. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Luca. So uh, we'll wrap it up there. We're getting close to 40 minutes, Luca. We're, we're, we're in overtime. We're in the, the last minutes of the game here. So, Luca, on behalf of everyone at Richmond Hill Soccer Club, the staff, the players, the coaches, the administrators, I want to thank you very, very much for taking the time this morning and giving us your background all the way back to you're a young kid at North York in Ajax, all the way up through your European adventures, Canada, now playing in the CPL, the Iron Man of, of the league. So thanks for all that great in information, Luca. Um, I'm sure the players have got lots of great advice and hopefully you're, you're listening well and making some notes that you can apply in your own game. In your own game. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we're on the field soon and you can get a, a chance to do it. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Luca, thank you very, very much. Uh, kids, make sure you get your tickets for for York Nine and uh, cheer Luca and York York Nine on to great success this season. And with your support, I'm sure Luca will be back in the men's national team in no time, and um, we'll see him playing in the World Cup here in Canada, Mexico, and the USA. So, Luca, thank you very, very much. We appreciate your time, my friend. Any last comments, Luca, before we go? No, I mean, uh, thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Bobby, Carl. Thank you, uh, all you that listened. Um, hopefully, I was able to pass on a bit of advice, a bit of knowledge and some of my experiences. So, uh, I appreciate you guys having me. And, you know, hopefully, once everything goes back to normal and the soccer season does start up, um, first of all, good luck with all your um, training and your careers ahead. Um, I know you're still young, but continue to work hard and, you know, sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want if you put hard work to it. So I appreciate you guys having me. I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you, Luca. So for everyone who's listening, please, please uh, check out our podcast. They are available on iTunes and they are available through the Richmond Hill Soccer Club website. And to all players, please, please stay tuned for all our homework programs and make sure you're checking them out. So thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Take care and be safe. Thank you, guys. Take care. Have a good day. Thanks, Luca. Cheers, Bobby. Thank you. Bye. Bye.